two days away from the Ambernick RG503. Perfect timing, people are saying, just for tax time. And a lot of people thought this thing was going to cost $200. Now, a couple of highlights just right off the bat is we got a 5-inch OLED Samsung screen. That thing is going to look good. I'm really excited about that. The resolution as far as playing things, uh, retro gaming in the native console or native resolution as well as you know, uh, maximizing the vertical and horizontal space. It's not actually ideal. We're actually going to show you that in just a second right here. We can see um, you got the um, the uh, Retroid Pocket 2 and you have the uh, RGB 10 Max uh, on these two left columns. And on the right column here, you have the new um, RG503. And you can see the average cumulative of all the scores maximizing the vertical space. It's actually not the best. It actually ties with the um, Retroid Pocket 2. Um, the RGB 10 is actually the better uh, screen as far as maximizing the vertical space and screen resolution. Now, uh, we're going to get into performance in a second, uh, and we'll get into all that. But back to the um, the RG 503. So, much cheaper than the last Ambernick device, right? $135 is a $15 discount for launch. And then this one has the RK3566 chip in it, so it's going to be... Um, way better than the 351M as far as performance and a bigger screen, right? Five inches versus 3.5. Um, I don't know what the Wi-Fi is. Some people are speculating like what if they had a five gigahertz Wi-Fi and then this could be like a, a really cool streaming device. I really like that idea too because of the OLED screen, like streaming movies, streaming gameplay, Steam, stuff like that. Awesome. I, that actually would be a big selling point, I feel like. Um, and it does come with a charging cable, screen protector, all the good stuff. Just looking at the front of the device, I mean, it looks like you're going to get those bumpers at the top. And fairly standard controls you get with all the Amarnix. You got, you got volume. And then the USB Type-C on the bottom, you got one, two. You got dual SIM cards there, speakers, stereo speakers. Um, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff. I'm not a fan of that color, though. Do you like this color, Nick? I kind of like the blue one. Blue's cool, right? It's not a good color. Oh man. So long story short, as far as like, if you want the summary, you know, the Retroid Pocket 2 is, is a way better deal at 99 because it has a way better performance, right? At the end of the day, the problem is you can't get a Retroid Pocket 2 right now. There are two plus they're, they're really hard to come by. So, um, if you want to get something soonish, you know, it's really, it's really a, a competitor to the RGB 10 max two, right? It's like right in that same sweet spot, slightly better performance. Uh, but like most people are saying, like if you're just going to buy one, you might want to wait out for the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, right? If you can. But if you can't wait out, the RG503 might be a slight upgrade from the RGB10 Max 2. Um, I've played the RGB10 Max 2, and it's great. It's a really, really good device. Um, so brands, uh, release dates. Um, you know, this one obviously is coming out in a couple days here. Right around 10. People are saying it's right. It's perfectly timed around to buy with your tax return. Um, you know, potentially Android soon for the operating system here, Android 9, and then a lot, there is a lot of support for the RGB 10. Look at all that stuff, nice. But performance, it goes RGB 10 at the bottom, then the 503, and then the Retroid Pocket 2. You can see you have A's here all the way up to Nintendo DS, except a B for Nintendo DS on the RGB. Nintendo 64, you get a C, a B, and then an A, right? And then here you got C's, you got B's, you got C, C. So as you see, slightly better, um, well, way better than the RGB Max 2 you're going to get on Sega Saturn, right? And on GameCube. Wow, they're even giving it a D, so better than that. I'm surprised. I would never play GameCube on this thing, but hey, I mean, maybe a few games will run. And then F's on, wow, they're even saying Wii, 3DS, and PS2. Wow. Um that's exciting for what's to come. Then again, the Steam Deck's already out and it could do all this stuff, but at a hundred dollar price range, right? You got to keep that in mind. Hundred dollar price range here. Um, yeah. So let me know what you think. Um, I think it's going to be good. I like that. I did not like the last Ambernick device. Uh, Ambernick device. I thought it was um, way too expensive, and um, you know everyone you know got on me. For that, or that was literally the five five two. Yeah, it's just look at that for two two thirty, right? So while more powerful, it's just I think 
they broke the bank for a lot of people. So we finally got a, a nice little middle point here with the new uh, arrival of the 503. I'll put links in the description if you're interested. It comes out in a couple days. That's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Um, I think it's good timing, especially with the chip shortages and, and hard finding things. You know, I, I do think this this one will find a, um, a home for a lot of people. But that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.